Let's break them down tonight. Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez facing allegations that could land her in serious legal trouble. Fox News caught up with her today and asked the Congresswoman about a complaint filed by a conservative watchdog that claims she and her chief of staff violated campaign finance laws. Do you have any comment on the FEC violation uh, filed against your office? Uh, there is no violation, so there's no violation. Do you think that's a sign of you taking dark money? Oh, no, no. Okay, let's bring in the former chief counsel for the House Judiciary Committee, Julian Epstein. White House correspondent for the Daily Caller, Sagar and Jetty. And from the Heritage Foundation, Hans von Spakovsky. By the way, a former member of the Federal Election Commission himself. So, Hans, I'll start with you. You've seen the filings. What do you make of the case so far? There are potential very serious violations here. Um, uh, she and her chief of staff were in legal control of a political action committee. So there's a potential there for not only illegal contributions uh, that benefited her campaign, illegal coordination, and also reporting violations. There's certainly enough there for the FEC to open up an investigation. And if it looks like this was an intentional and knowing violation, then there would be the potential for the Justice Department to open up a criminal violation. So that's a separate track from FEC based on what they found. Right. Um, the Washington Times uh, has this uh, in their article on this today, saying the appearance that she's involved in a self-dealing arrangement is particularly troublesome for Ms. Ocasio-Cortez because the New York Democrat presents herself as a working class champion against the corrupting influence of corporate money and special interests. Julian. Uh, you know, look, the, the details of this are very, very sketchy at this point. We, there's 90% there's of the facts that we don't know and 10% that have been alleged. Um, if they do arise to something that's credible, I think it should be handled the way everything else should be handled when there's a suggestion of a scandal or, or, or something improper. There should be a, an appropriate investigation. Uh, and I don't think, whether it's Trump in the White House, whether it's uh, a member of Congress, I, I think the idea of trying to argue against an investigation when there's credible, uh, if there are credible accusations, is just a, a, a lose-lose uh, argument. And Tucker, how much of this do you think is inexperience versus she and her chief of staff being in cahoots and really trying to scam the system, knowing that everyone's going to be looking at them? Yeah, I, I spoke to a Republican close to the White House and talked about how they, they, they pointed out that inexperience could point to both this and the campaign finance violation, alleged campaign finance violation, that the congresswoman was grilling Michael Cohen about with the allegation of campaign finance violations with regard to the president. And so they said in both cases, it's clear that these things could both be a matter of inexperience. It could be a matter of just ineptitude, but that because of our political system that both have become high profile cases. And now she's also in hot water for something similar very much herself. There's one thing that Hans and I probably agree on, Hans being a former commissioner, which is what is and is not a campaign violation, finance violation, is notoriously yeah. vague, poorly yeah. defined in the statute, sometimes defined by yeah. the FEC regulations, and probably unconstitutional for vagueness in many cases. I'm one of the few Democrats who argue, and I get a lot of guff from this, mm -hmm. that Michael Cohen probably would have never been convicted That's by true. a jury a lot of uh, because that that, the law is just that ambiguous uh, on hush money. Yeah, uh, and, I get and there have been cases that, that, that show that that are just a mess, and but it's something that needs more. Clarity. We are long overdue for a clarification yeah. in statute about what is and what is not a campaign violation. Okay, I'm violation. sure the congresswoman doesn't want to be the subject of that case. Okay, the president now um, pushing back as he says that this is a disgrace, this is a massive fishing expedition going after him, his businesses, his family. Uh, but Congressman Ted Lieu, Democrat, tweeting this: "The fact that our investigation is wide-ranging doesn't mean it's a fishing expedition." It means there are lots of potential fish to catch. Um, Hans, a lot of people are calling this the pre-impeachment phase. What do you make of it? Look, Congress does have a lot of authority through, it, through oversight uh, to do investigations, but that's usually related to how the executive branch is operating under the money that's been uh, appropriated for it. But, and also, if new legislation is needed. I, I haven't seen any of that here, and I haven't seen any specific evidence of actual violations of the law, which is usually a basis before you start investigation. I, I have to say, Adam Schiff seems to be uh, copying uh, Joseph McCarthy in, in wanting to open up investigations when they don't actually have any evidence of any wrongdoing. Well, he says they do, and he has a gut feeling about it, and they keep saying, well, we need more facts, but they are making plenty of allegations in the meantime. Stephen Collinson, an analyst, has said this, it's basic politics for Democrats not to call their investigations an impeachment drive right now. To do so would hand the GOP a gift, as it claims the fix is already in, Sagar.
Yeah, and you, you have several congressmen who have already come out and said that they believe that the president has obstructed for justice. Those are the pre, you know, the pre-statements prior to the issues of this. It's interesting when what Kristen was talking about earlier with the president's strategy towards this. He was citing President Obama's executive privilege. That was something that did not work out for President Obama when he cited executive privilege when it came to the Fast and Furious case. So it's setting down for a big showdown with the White House. Mm -hmm. Well, and Britt Hume tweeted this today about all these requests. He says special counsel Mueller has had investigative resources that go far beyond what is available to a congressional committee. If Mueller finds no collusion, is it likely Schiff and his new lawyer will be able to, Julian? Well, I, there's a lot to unpack here, but I'm going to take the same position I took on the question on Cortez and the campaign finance, which is it's just it seems to me untenable to argue that there shouldn't be investigations. You've got 37 uh, indictments or guilty pleas at this point. You've got over 100 documented contacts during the Trump campaign and transition with the Democrats Russians. don't think the special counsel is going to be able to handle this? Well, they have different purviews and they have different functions. As Hans just said, sometimes a Democratic investigation will look towards legislative reform. And there's a half dozen legislative reforms I can think of that come out, that could potentially come out of this. But 37 indictments or guilty pleas, 100 contacts. The, so again, if that's the, being the handled Trump, by the, the special counsel, why do they need to go back and do all of the same requests for documents and the same people and the same information? Well, because this Congress looks at it through a different lens than the special counsel does. The special counsel is looking the at... lens? No. The special, not necessarily. The special counsel is looking at whether to prosecute or not prosecute period, end of, ca of, sub of case, it could make a recommendation on impeachment. Congress can be looking at impeachment. I don't think the impeachment case has yet been made. It might be made. We have to wait and see what the facts show. Congress could be looking at a whole host of other reforms. It could be looking at enforcement on the emoluments clause. It could be looking at whether there should be a statutory basis for prosecution of a president when he leaves office. The, when you're talking about the hundred contacts that ha were had with the Russians b during the campaign and transition, sharing of intelligence information, the, the, the Trump team meeting with Russian officials at Again, the all at things the that Trump the special counsel is looking at. Right, but there's but there's a per, there is a reason for Congress to have a separate process. One is because it may be looking at legislative reform. Two is if you are going to do something, whether it's ultimately a, pro a decision on prosecution of the president or somebody else, or impeachment or somebody else, you have to make a public case on this. Yeah. The, the Federalist Papers 65 were very, very instructive on favorites. the question. Yeah. Very, very instructive on the question on impeachment. Right, it was it that it is a political question. You have to make a political yep. case to the body and, politic and to the and public. And we've heard a number of Democrats, including the House Judiciary Chair, but Mueller Gary doesn't Yadler, do that. saying, well, I'm making a public record now because I have to convince the American people. Before we go for impeachment, we've got to leave it there. And there's a lot to be said for that. Okay. All right.